Okay, for this screencast, we're going to do something called uh, the RK4 algorithm. Um, in order to, to highlight uh, its, its, its benefit, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to code Euler's method um, in RK2 and then in RK4 um, as well. So let's, um, there's a couple things that are going to be constant throughout. So let's make a time step of, of 1.0. Um, let's uh, let's make this a function called my RK4, and uh, the reason why I want to do that is because down here at the bottom, what I want to do is I want to make a uh, um, a y dot equals f of x comma t, and uh, you're going to see uh, why I have that here. So let's make our, our derivative routine. So let's say let's just do something simple: y dot plus five y. Um, Let's do 2y equals 0. So then that means that y dot equals, and sorry, this should be y comma t. So then that means that y dot is negative 2 times y. And, and that's it. The t goes away. It's unused. But just for uh, benefit's sake, we're going to put it there. <clears throat> okay. So uh, basically, the way I code uh, Euler's method inefficiently is I say uh, a while t is less than 10, and then you say uh, uh, t of n plus 1 equals t of n plus dt. Um, and then you say uh, y of n plus 1. And I'm going to say y e for y Eulers equals y of y e of n plus. And then here's where you take the function evaluated at y n comma t n times dt. And that's uh, Euler's method. Now, in order to get that to work, we need to initialize t. Um, so I'm actually going to make a, a, a TE as well, a TE, TE, TE here. Um, and so we're going to say uh, that T E of 1 is 0 and Y E of 1 is, I'm going to say Y 0. And that way up here I can say Y 0 is 2. All right, so then if I um, make a figure here and I plot T E comma Y E in, um, I guess we'll do green the line width 2. Um, if I run this, assuming I don't get any errors, let's see, no, yeah, I forgot to define n. So you need to say n equals 1, and then n equals n plus 1 here. Let's see, it looks like I still got an error. Um, oh yeah, I didn't like y, y, e, and t, e. Alright, there we go. So there's my Euler's method. So obviously you see it oscillates back and forth. It's not, it's not perfect at all. Okay, so um, what we could do also um, is actually code the analytical analytical solution. Um, so for this guy, this is really easy. The y um, analytical solution is just uh, y zero times exp to the uh, and what was our it was negative two uh, negative two times t. So I'm going to make t go from I guess we went to ten so zero dt to 10 and then I'm going to go ahead and I'll move the figure from line 23 up to here and then I'll plot a t comma y a soul comma in black comma 2 okay and then that should give us uh, oh I forgot to throw a hold on in there there we go so there's my analytical solution so Euler's method is absolutely terrible so um, basically so basically what we can do is uh, the, the same thing. Now that we have everything in place, we can essentially do the same thing for RK2. So I'm going to say uh, T2 of 1 is 0, same thing. Um, Y2 of 1 is Y0, same initial conditions. Reinitialize N. And then now you do the same thing. While T2 is less than 10, um, you have in here T2 of N plus 1 equals T2 of N plus DT. And then here is where things start to change. So you have y2 of n plus 1 equals y2 of n plus, and remember it's phi times dt. Phi is 0 0.5 times k1 plus k2. k1 is the function evaluated at y2 of n comma t2 of n. And then k2 is the function evaluated at y2n plus k1 times dt comma t2n plus dt. 
and then we're going to run this guy. Plot t2, y2 in red, line with comma 2, and we should get something slightly better. Nope, didn't like it. I uh, keep doing y again. Um, wait, what line of code was that? Oh, it's still busy. Oops. It's busy because... Oh, I didn't even... I don't have a close all in here either. Let me throw a... At the top here, let me throw a close all in here. And it's not busy. Be, it's busy because I don't have n equals n plus 1 in here. Anyway, man, that's that's really... This is why this is very inefficient, but... Wild, wild loops are dangerous. Okay, boom. All right, well... So it looks like uh, Euler's method oscillates up and down. Hune's method, yeah. So RK2 is also called Hune's method. Um, Hune's method is flatlined, um, which I guess you could consider is better than this oscillating pattern. Um, but basically, now we need to do an RK4. So uh, now essentially we're going to do the same thing. T4 of one is zero. T4 of one. Uh, sorry, y4 of, of 1 is y0, same initial conditions, n equals 1, while t4 is less than 10. Um, and then I'm, um, let's see, let's make sure we add in the n plus 1. I want to do this, I want to make sure I add that so I don't screw that up. Um, t4 n plus 1 equals t4 n plus dt, that doesn't change. Um, and then now you have k1 equals k2 equals, k3 equals, k4 equals, you have four derivatives, then you say phi is 1 6 times k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3, and this is all on Sakai by the way, um, if you're curious of how to get this, and then y4 is the same thing, y4 n plus 1 equals y4 of n plus phi times dt, so that, that's the same. K1 is the same as all as the RK2 case. So it's a function evaluated at y4 n comma t2 4 of n. But then K2 is actually the function evaluated at y4 of n plus k1 times dt over 2, comma t4 of n plus dt over 2. So you actually go a half a time step forward. Then you actually do the same thing for K3, except you step a half a time step forward with K2. K4, you step the full time step forward, so I'm going to get rid of this dt over 2, but you use K3 to step forward. And then that's it. And then you plot T4, comma Y4. I'm going to do this in, uh, which one? I guess blue. And I'm going to do a line width of 2. And then I'm going to throw a legend in here and say the first one was the analytical, analytical solution. The second one was uh, Euler's, and then we had RK2 Hume's, and then we had RK4 as well, and then legend is misspelled. Boom. Okay, so there you go. So you've got the analytical solution in black, Euler's method which oscillates, Hume's method which is flatline, RK4 which is more accurate. Um, if you make your time step smaller, let's say like 0 0.6, you'll see that Euler's method starts to do better, Hume's method starts to do better, but the RK4 is pretty much perfect. So what, what, uh, since RK4 is a fourth order method, it allows you to um, ha make your time step larger than it would have. So if we wanted to, ha let's say we wanted to make sure Euler's method converged, so see like even with a time step of 0 0.1, Euler's method is still very far away from our solution. So we made it say 0 0.01. Now all of them are on top of each other, but we had to make our time step almost an order of magnitude smaller. And still, if we zoom in, Euler's method is still off by quite a bit. But in this case, I can make the time step 0 0.6 and um, RK4 and analytical solution are actually pretty close together. Now the, the beauty uh, this video is getting kind of long, but the, the beauty of, of, of this here is that you can change this uh, y dot function to say 5, and now you'll notice that you know RK2 blows up, Euler's method blows up, but it looks like RK4 is, is uh, working. If we lower our time step to say 0 0.4, yeah, here we go. So see, we can really see the benefit of RK4 and the way I set this up. And because I have my derivatives function down here, 
I can easily just change this derivatives function and uh, everything else would be exactly the same. Okay, I well, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.